The Hiragata Shuriken was a less lethal weapon for beginners. While the Bo Shuriken was a much powerful and efficient weapon for experts. And welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. Out of the many weapons that the ninja used, the most famous one would surely be the throwing star, Shuriken, right? I know you fell in love with them when they appeared as a really cool weapon in Naruto. However, if you're a fan of ninja, you probably know that many people point out that the way they use it in anime and manga were not how they actually did. Some even say they weren't used at all. But then, what were they and how were they actually used? So today, I'll explain the theory of Shuriken that I believe so far from all the research I've done about ninja. Please understand this is not an absolute answer, but just a sharing of one study. I will first explain about the history of Shuriken, then the two different categories of Shuriken by their shapes, and another two different categories of Shuriken skills that might make you think. That's counted as shuriken techniques too? At the end of the video, I will also briefly talk about the kunai, the other throwing weapon that you might imagine a ninja using. By watching this video, you can understand about the tools that the ninja used and enjoy their content even more. And even if you get confused somewhere during the middle, that's okay. I will wrap everything up again at the end of the video and today's conclusion. First, let's talk about the history of Shuriken to have a clearer image on what they are. Shuriken was mainly a tool that the ninja used to prevent the enemy from chasing them when escaping. They first appeared in the latter half of the Muromachi period, the second shogunate era. Before the existence of Shuriken, there were already some skills to use items to shake off an enemy's chase. However, they were using stones, short swords, and needles instead, and they were not efficient in ways of expense, portability, and power. So this is why Shuriken was born as a disposable weapon that made up for the shortcomings of the other items. A cheap, easy to carry but powerful throwing weapon. The name Shuriken came up in the Muromachi period too. Shuriken is written like this in Japanese. Te means hand. Ura means under, and ken means sword. So shuriken meant the sword hidden under the hand. Because in most cases, ninja would apply poison on shuriken to increase its effectiveness as a weapon. Their skills to use them did not become a popular martial art like swordsmanship. However, today, there's an official sport of throwing shuriken like darts held by the All Japan Ninja Shuriken Championship. Sounds really cool, doesn't it? Now that you understand the history of Shuriken, let's take a look at the different types of Shuriken by their shape. The major categories of Shuriken by their shape are Hiragata Shuriken and Bo Shuriken. First of all, Hiragata Shuriken are this kind that most people would associate with. The material they are made from is mainly iron plates, so they are actually quite heavy. A ninja would basically carry only three or four of these, and it's not realistic to throw multiple Hiragata Shuriken in a row, as you see in anime and manga. There are various types of flat Shuriken, depending on the number of sharp edges, such as 3-way shuriken, 4-way shuriken, and 8-way shuriken. Although it is thought of as the main kind, 
the hiragata shuriken compared to the bo shuriken has quite a lot of disadvantages. The wind noise of the rotating blade makes it easy for the enemy to detect, and it's not as effective as a weapon because it only scratches the enemy and doesn't pierce. That's why in most cases they would apply poison on the blades to increase their effectiveness. But then why use the Hiragata Shuriken? It's because they were easier to handle than the Bo Shuriken, and you can throw it more accurately without training as you need for the Bo Shuriken. Next, the Bo Shuriken looks like this. It was just a very simple iron stick with a pointy end. But this was the correct form of Shuriken that made up for all the shortcomings of the Hiragata Shuriken. They were much lighter, so a larger number could be carried together. And it was stronger as a weapon without making noise upon using. However, again, it only has one or two pointy ends. So you need much more practice than the Hiragata Shuriken to be able to use them effectively. I've actually tried throwing the real ones before, but I could only stick one out of three Bolshuriken on my first try. The others just hit the wall and fell. So to wrap this up, the Hiragata Shuriken was a less lethal weapon for beginners. While the Bolshuriken was a much powerful and efficient weapon for experts. So they both have their pros and cons. Which would you choose? Then next, let's talk about the different purposes and types of Shuriken skills, or in Japanese, Shuriken Jutsu. The two classifications are Tome Shuriken and Seme Shuriken. And they each have three different types of shuriken techniques. So six kinds in total. First, what kind of skills are regarded as tome shuriken? The kanji tome added at the beginning of this phrase means to stay. Yes, the tome shuriken were the kind of shuriken skills to make the enemies stay where they are. They are one. Shinobi Shuriken, two, Seijouken, three, Ranjouken. Let's take a closer look at each of them. Shinobi Shuriken is simply the skills to shoot the Shuriken we discussed earlier, to distract an enemy and escape from emergency situations. The important point is that the purpose is not to kill or attack, but to distract the enemy. Seijouken is the skill to throw an edged tool like short swords instead. The assumed situation would be if the ninja ran out of shuriken and used a short sword hidden inside your clothes. Lastly, Nanjouken is the skill for the ninja to throw anything they have near them, like sand or ash on the ground or even bowls to the enemy. Even flipping over a table in case of an enemy attacking during a meal will be considered the skill of Ranjouken. When I first studied about this, I thought, well then, I was using ninja skills as a kid during a fight with my younger sister when I was throwing stuff at her. But being able to use anything as a weapon effectively in an emergency isn't as easy as you might imagine. It is thought of as something that you need to train to achieve. In all Hobudo, old martial arts of Japan too. Next, let's talk about the second classification, Seme Shuriken. The first kanji, Seme, means to attack. While the Tome Shuriken was meant to just distract or stop your enemy, the skills of Seme Shuriken are meant to attack or actually kill your opponents. They are 1. Kaseiken 2. Yakuken 3. Dokuken Kaseiken is a skill to attack with fire arrows and torches. As I've explained in my past videos about ninja, in order to fight with martial art professionals like samurai, they developed unique fighting skills of arson. 
Yakuken was not meant to kill the opponent, but the skill to use powder medicine to blind or make the enemies fall asleep. The medicine to blind the enemies used ingredients such as red peppers and ash, while the sleeping powder is said to have been made from burning dried toads. Lastly, Dokuken was the skill to apply poison to the blades of Shuriken in order to kill the opponent. These poison include manure that can cause tetanus, or the poison of aconite. The poison of aconite has a paralytic effect that stops cell activity, and ingestion of a lethal dose can lead to death within 6 hours. Pretty scary if you ask me. In order to make these poisons reach the enemy's wounds easier, the Hapo Shuriken with 8 sharp edges was often used for Dokuken. Lastly, let's also briefly talk about the Kunai, the other tool that you might associate with the ninja using as a throwing weapon. What were they and how were they actually used? To make long story short, please think that the kunai was the kind of survival knife you see today. So it's actually more of a convenient multi-purpose tool that the ninja used, and less of a throwing weapon or sword we might imagine. I'm sorry Miyato. These are just a few examples of how the kunai were used. One, to break the lock when invading a building. Two, to create a step on a wall to climb. Three, to dig a hole in the ground. The round hole on the edge of the handle was for ropes to go through, so they can use it as a wedge too. Then lastly, today's conclusion. Shuriken first appeared in the latter half of the Murawachi period. It means the sword hidden under the hand and it was invented as an efficient weapon to shake off the enemy's chase. There are mainly two different categories of shuriken by shape, hiragata and bo. The hiragata shuriken was less effective but easy to handle for beginners, and the bo shuriken was a more effective weapon for people with trained skills. There are also two different categories for the skills of shuriken, tome and Seme. The tome shuriken was meant to stop the enemy, like throwing a shuriken, sharp swords, or anything effective nearby. The seme shuriken was meant to attack or kill the enemy, the techniques to handle fire and poison. Kunai was more of a convenient multi-purpose tool for the ninja, like a survival knife, less a weapon we might imagine today. They used it for breaking locks of doors, climb walls, and to dig holes in the ground. So that's it for today, thank you very much for watching. If this video helped you to deepen your understanding towards ninja culture, please hit the like button to let me know. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling Kyoto, and social problems in Japan. To learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Dowo, arigatou gozaimashita! Everyone, once again, thank you very much for watching this video, and welcome to the Omake Talk. So, in today's video, I've been introducing the Shuriken as a weapon that the ninja used. But um, I had some people asking me in the comments, um, I heard before that the samurai actually used the shuriken as well, and that is a yes. I believe from what I've studied so far, I believe um, the samurai used to use the, uh, the bow shuriken, but not the hirakata shuriken. Um, if you actually train, for example, in Japan, the kobudo, where I was talking about the old martial arts, uh, if you train in swords, if you train in, for example, jujutsu, kenjutsu and such, um, studying or training how to properly throw the bow shuriken is actually part of what you train in, yes. And so that's what I used to do before, by the way. Um, I explained, you know, I used to throw bow shuriken before. Um, in the past when 
I was still working in the tourism industry. I used to work at a place called Samurai Juku in Kyoto. It was、um, about an hour to 90 minute experience where you get to use a real sword and cut goza mats, which are rolled up tatami surfaces. And it was a place where you get to learn how to swing a sword and sheath it, unsheath it, and such. And it wasn't actually the bolshuriken was actually just part of of watching the master do it in front of you、um, on our free time.、Uh, the master, I was just interpreter by the way, so he would teach me how to throw the bolshuriken on our free time, and that's how I、um, experienced bolshuriken before. I've probably, I probably won't be able to do it now. It's been a while. It's been about a year, maybe two years now since I haven't thrown a bolshuriken, but I remember it was. A A lot of fun, and also I wanted to say that、um, I found out that the samurai uses bullshit again. I think almost right after I started studying about their history and culture, when I was still in university, maybe I think it was like maybe five or six years ago, and I was really shocked at the beginning. Maybe some of you are the same because you know if you read like I don't know Bushido or all these movies and books, you know you you learn that you know the samurai are all very fair and you know they have their dignity and stuff. And I was like, you know they use shuriken. You know shuriken is like a, you know it's a long range weapon. Of course, it's a throwing kind of weapon, and you know it's not very. Fair, like if you come, like two samurais come up to each other and they say, "I'm gonna, you know, fight you in a duel battle," and you, you know, if the opponent suddenly threw a shuriken, yet you, the fight won't be, you know, fair at all, right? So in the beginning, I was really shocked, actually, but you know, now I understand that it was, it's pretty obvious. I mean, if you you're risking your life, you know, being fair is definitely, you know, the top priority is to survive. You know, it's not as important. So I understand now, but in the beginning, when I was like, in still like in my Early twenties or something. I was really shocked, and I remember that. All right. So,、um, if you know more about the,、uh, the shuriken and samurai、um, culture and history, be great if you can let me know.、Um, it's really difficult to actually find like books and historical, I don't know, evidence about it. So, I've only been taught about both shuriken and samurai history through the master I originally, you know, mentioned earlier. So, if you know more about it, be great if you can let me know. Okay. All right. Then we'll see you in our next video. Thank you so much.